We search through the WoW forums, YouTube comments, and Reddit posts to find what people are saying about Wrath of the Lich King. There were rumors of Season 5 DKs being busted, and people even claim that Wrath is an imbalanced mess. But was all of this true, or were these some nostalgic myths? To find out, we consulted with some of the best Wrath of the Lich King players to go on a myth-busting adventure. We travel back in time and explore some memes, and fast forward to today and see what the best players are doing on the beta. Once all of this is done, we hope to clear up a few of the biggest myths surrounding Wrath of the Lich King PvP. And if you're wondering how we figured all this out, it's because we've been working behind the scenes with some hardcore Wrath players. Why? Well, to help us with our brand new site that hosts incredible courses that compiles thousands of hours of experience, broken down into easy steps for you to start Wrath off with a huge head start compared to anyone else. From damage, crowd control, healing to the most advanced tricks, we've got you covered right from the start. So sign up for Skillcapped with our special discount link below, which gives you access to retail and classic in the same subscription. So check us out after this. Starting off, we obviously can't mention Wrath of the Lich King myths without discussing Death Knights. Virtually everywhere you look, you will see the same type of comment about how Season 5 Death Knights are the most broken spec of all time, and how everyone will just be playing DK once Wrath is released. Well, not so fast. For one, we have to remember that Classic Wrath will be played on a patch identical to 335, and a lot of what made DK's overtune in Season 5 happened much earlier in the game. In fact, in the background is a list of DK nerfs in patch 3.1 alone, which was the first major major update to Wrath of the Lich King. In the original Season 5, Icy Touch damage was overtuned, and glyphs like Death and Decay Stun made DKs quite strong, and it's mechanics like this that would be removed from the game entirely. Are DKs good though? Of course, and depending on who you ask, they are one of the strongest melee specs in the game while having a relatively high skill cap. Expect to see familiar comps like TSG or PHDK while potentially seeing caster melee setups like DK Shadow Priest or even DK Ellie. Wait, did we just mention Ellie Shaman? If there's one thing that is not a myth, it's that Elemental Shamans will be busted the entire expansion. They're pretty much the Wrath of the Lich King version of Outlaw Rogue, incredibly disruptive, super tanky, and having some huge damage potential. Astral Shift is one of their passive talents, which reduces damage taken by 30% while in a stun or silence, which obviously can make them a difficult kill target for comps like RMP. But even outside of that, between Grounding Totem, a short cooldown interrupt, an insane knockback, and solid casted heals, Elemental Shaman are a goalie for their team. Even though Ellie might be slightly weaker in Season 5, it will scale tremendously later on, and it's no surprise that many top players already have their eyes on Ellie for the expansion's release. You should expect to see comps like Lock Shaman and Thundercleave do exceptionally well throughout Wrath Classic, and we will be sure to give you a full 3v3 tier list. But back to our original myth, are DKs the most broken class in Wrath? Not at all. That title probably belongs to Ellie Shaman. And on the topic of Broken, I'm sure you have seen people say that RMP will be absolutely busted, because of course it will. But seriously, people sometimes point to the meta during the Arena Tournament era, where all of the best private server players seem to dominate as RMP. But is that what will happen in Classic? Well, probably not. But to be clear, RMP is in fact a good comp. With that in mind, it does have a relatively high skill cap, and by no means does it have free wins in high level Wrath Arena. The reason why so many players were able to dominate its RMP on private servers has more to do with the fact that these players were just so much better than everyone else at the time, and later on, Elemental Shamans, Arms Warriors, and Holy Paladins came to dominate the meta. And although you might see the same players play RMP once Classic gets released, there will probably be much more representation from the actual meta classes. So will RMP be dominating everyone in Wrath Classic? Probably not. Okay, but everyone knows about RMP and LSD and Wrath, and according to the forums, the Lich King meta is based around flavor of the month comps and everything is imbalanced. Well, this is just plain wrong. In fact, despite having fewer classes, there's a plethora of viable comps for virtually every spec in the game. Even super off-meta specs like Feral Druid or Arcane Mage can be competitive in Wrath, but of course there are things like Fury Warriors and Holy Priests that are virtually extinct in PvP. And yes, some specs are better than others, but that's been the case in literally every single WoW expansion. Adding to this is the fact that playing an alt is a bit more time consuming in Wrath since each spec is so individually complex. This makes re-rolling flavor of the month specs much more difficult, so people will likely stick to one or two classes the entire expansion. No matter what those classes are, they are guaranteed to have at least one viable spec for Arena and a handful of comps to go with it. There are even double healer comps for God's sakes. Of course, counter comps do exist and there is a relatively clear 3v3 comp tier list, but again, these things have existed in every single expansion. So is Wrath an imbalanced fiesta? Not really. Everything can work, including tanks. 
Oh yeah, that reminds us of another myth that is actually true, that tanks are pretty busted. Well, not all tanks, but prot warriors and prot paladins for sure. You probably hear people talk about comps like ATC, where prot warriors play with hunters for some massive single target burst. That is one of the quirks about prot warriors specifically, that they can actually do a lot of front loaded damage, but we probably won't see much of them until later on. The same is true of Prot Paladins, who will likely play Rhett early on. Prot Pala isn't as bursty, but offers enormous amounts of utility, most notably a defensive dispel for their team. Yes, that's right, hybrids like Shadow Priests, Rhett Paladins, and Prot Pallies can dispel magic effects off their partners. Together, this makes Prot Specs actually viable for competitive arena. And with that, we can actually confirm the myth that yeah, tanks are pretty good. Moving on, we have another myth that is mostly true, that you need PvE gear to do well. This is probably the biggest complaint we've seen about Wrath on the forum so far. People are steadfast in their belief that you need fully goaded PvE gear to have any shot at doing well. This is sort of misleading. Yes, there are some classes that do noticeably better with specific PvE items, especially later on in the expansion with trinkets like DFO and DBW, and of course, Shadow Morn for any greasy melee player. But some classes, notably Elemental Shaman and Warlock, can actually do okay with almost full PvP itemization. Will raiding help you in Arena? Yes. Is raiding hard? Not for most pieces. Do you need to raid? Yes, if you want to have the best loadout, but it's completely up to you. There will surely be some lazy players who get Gladiator without stepping foot in any raid content all expansion. So back to the original myth. Do you need PvE gear? Yes, but it's a case by case basis. And finally, the most important myth of all, that Wrath of the Lich King is the best PvP expansion of all time. So, this is a very political subject for a few reasons. Do some people believe Wrath is the best? Yes. Do they have good reasons for believing this? Of course. Most people would probably agree that Wrath was the best PvP expansion in its era, beating out both vanilla and TBC. Overall class design is much more fleshed out, and the game feels more responsive and just more interactive overall. Once you step out of this early era of WoW, this is where Wrath has a few contenders, with other people arguing that Missa Pandaria was the best expansion of all time. Hell, I bet there's someone out there who's arguing Shadowlands is the GOAT X-Pack. Kinda weird, but you do you, I guess. Overall, Wrath just represents a very unique era of WoW as a whole, being the most popular expansion by far. It's easy to look back with rose-colored glasses, and Outcast told us 20 years ago what roses actually smell like, but in this case, the nostalgia is probably valid. If you never got to experience Wrath and are on the fence about playing, we say go for it. There's a reason why most of the early WoW PvP gods got their name in Wrath of the Lich King, and how their influence still affects countless players today. If it wasn't for Wrath of the Lich King PvP, who knows what could have happened for WoW? Maybe there could have been some alternate timeline where RMP wasn't the best comp. And it's possible that in this timeline, skill capped wouldn't even exist at all. But good thing it does exist, and so does our 400 rating gain guarantee. Yes, no matter what expansion you play, skill capped has you covered. Stay on top of the meta in Shadowlands and get ahead of the competition in both Wrath and Dragonflight, all with a low monthly fee of 499. Get access to hundreds of class guides and over a thousand arena commentaries designed by pro players with information you can trust. Joining today will also get you instant access to the premium section of our Discord channel, where our team of expert players can help you with all of your PvP needs. So, what are you waiting for? Stay ahead of the competition and start your PvP journey today at skillcap.com. Alright guys, that about wraps it up for this one. Give us your thoughts and comment what other myths you've heard about Wrath PvP. And once again, hit that subscribe button to stay up to date with all Shadowlands, Dragonflight, and Lich King news. As always though, we want to thank you all for watching. See you soon.